Um, as you are well aware, um, the public perception of science and religion is often that the two are inherently or intrinsically in conflict. And in fact, this is called the conflict metaphor. And this shapes the way our civilization views these matters. So if I go into schools, often uh, students will ask, how can I be a priest and a scientist? I used to be a nuclear physicist and then worked in information systems and then trained to be a priest. And they say, I must be mad or something to be able to do, to do both of these things. Um, so the perception is that uh, there's this in intrinsic conflict. Of course, from a scientist's point of view, scientists like many other people in society have a range of views, you know. So the, so the perception that the public has and the perception of um, within the actual world of working science uh, is very, very different. Scientists, like other people in society, um, have a spectrum of views. So what, what then is the origin of, of this perception of a conflict? And I think as Professor Ron Numbers uh, was probably explaining to you in a recent interview, um, a lot of this comes down to the 19th century. In the 19th century, um, during the Industrial Revolution and afterwards, there was a sense that science was growing in power, particularly its power to transform society. And um, uh, there were certain people who wanted to harness that power to make it um, almost as a, as a way of, of fighting against theology. And so people like Andrew Dixon White wrote a book on the history of the warfare of science and, and theology in Christendom. And he was the Richard Dawkins of the 19th century. And th th these stories then began to pass into popular circulation. And this is the narrative um, that is widely believed today. But I must stress that narratives are not science. Narratives are, are stories that we tell. The truth of um, the history of science and religion and their interaction is much more complicated and much more interesting than any simplistic narrative uh, would suggest. Um, the more balanced and realistic view would be don't trust simple narratives. <laughs> so, so um, Take the story, for example, of, of, of the Big Bang. Now, now, the Big Bang is now the modern theory of cosmology. Um, it is the, the theory of the origin of the universe. And often when I go into a school, someone will ask me, how can I be a Catholic priest and believe in the Big Bang theory? And then I will show them a picture of the man who invented the Big Bang theory with his dog collar, <laughs> his collar of priesthood, because the man who invented the Big Bang theory was a Catholic priest. Most people don't know this. His name was Georges Lemaitre, and he was a Belgian priest and astrophysicist. And he wrote the paper in 1927, which first proposed that the universe had expanded from a hot, fiery initial state. He used Einstein's theories in a new way to predict universal expansion from a hot and compact initial state. Um, but what was interesting was the reception of the Big Bang theory in the, in the religious world and in the scientific world. Because the Pope, Pope, Bennett, Pope um, Pius XII, um, gave great honors to Father Georges Lemaitre. He made him the head of the Pontifical Academy of Sciences, which is the highest privilege that the Pope could give, um, could give anyone in the world of science. But in the Soviet Union, the theory was rejected for 30 years. And there's a famous meeting of astronomers in Leningrad in 1948, where they say we must fight the Big Bang Theory because it's encouraging the priests. So, <laughs> so this, is not, this is not a history that you hear much these days in popular books. Um, but, uh, and that's why you, I think it's very important to be, to be critical of the popular narratives because the real history is often more complicated uh, and more interesting.